everyone. Welcome to Girls with Dogs. This is Kimberly, the blogger behind Keep the Tail Wagging, and I'm here with my good friend, Kathy, the <laughs> blogger behind Grooming <laughs> Golden Moose. <laughs> And we are here for another week of our chat about dogs. Hey, Kathy. Hey, how you doing, Kathy? Girl, losing it <laughs> every minute of the day. Um, I'm good, but let's talk fast because we don't know how long the internet's going to last. I hey, I rhyme. Can I go ahead and do my little thing? Squeaky, squeaky. Um, <laughs> we had a very, very bad storm last night into this morning. Tons of thunder, um, thunderstorms heavy rain and um, wind that was just incredible. Lots of down limbs and stuff, but our power went out for most of the day. It's back now. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm a little spotty or something, just, you know, um, talk for me until I come back. But I, I, I'm hoping that it'll last, but I'm good. Other than that, we're safe. Um, no damage to the house or anything. Still a lot of wind. Um, oh. And I, before I forget, let me tell you, the hockey game went well. I did not take Jax with me last Sunday. So for those of you that did not listen to last week, um, I'm not even going to tell you about the <laughs> hockey game. We're going to make you go listen to last week. And then you can also find out about what I had for dinner last <laughs> weekend as, as well. Um, lots of comments on that snippet too. But, um, but with the hockey game... Um, I did some research because I'd never been. And between um, the cowbells, which I don't understand why they have cowbells at a hockey game. And, <laughs> and it, it's okay. If you know, you know, please let us know. But I, I didn't know. The lights go out. There's a lot of noise that, you know, the canned horn, um, people banging on the glass and hitting up on the glass. So Jax wouldn't have survived. He, he would be, <laughs> he would be in in bad shape mentally bad shape you'd be thinking he was at the apocalypse it's like he where would. did she bring he me would. to he would he would i can like hear him everything now. that i'm afraid of all in one space i mean and it did cheering it's it's just it's a little unique and it's intense and listen i saw the most beautiful golden doodle um you know up in the cheap seats with his his handler and of course it's so tight in those little rows and this dog was a good 75 pounder and the dog was sitting on her lap and he was trembling and I said oh my goodness I said such a sweet dog I said he looks terrified she said no no he's excited and I thought mm, you just don't know and mid mid game she took him out mm -hmm. because I don't know why she thought the trembling was excitement Oh, but he, you know, and he had all of that fluffy, fluffy hair, like Leo. So the mm -hmm. hair was moving. Yeah. And, and I'm like, no, no, he's not excited about this. Cause first of all, he doesn't even know what the hell he is. So I don't know that. But um, while I was there, it brought back some horrible memories of the Easter money mm -hmm. and why it did is because the mascot came over since, you know, we had this chill zone booth section mm -hmm. and they walk around all the way down and you know want to take pictures with kids and stuff and half of the dogs that I had with me from the hospital were okay but there were two dogs that really did not like this mascot at all uh -huh. and I just remembered experiences with my dogs either at the baseball game with the big eight foot river dog dog and then, um, but the Easter Bunny is what I remember when Harley or Leo came out of the leash and ran across the field as if to say, oh my God, it's coming and I don't know to get me. And I just know that maybe other dogs are okay, but my dogs and dogs that I've been around don't like to see humans in these costumes. And so if you've ever had an experience you know, go ahead and, and write back and let us know because I'm looking for a dog who doesn't have a problem with it. And I haven't seen very many of them. Yeah, I think Apollo wouldn't have a problem with it because he <clears throat> he loves attention and he loves everybody. And he's very curious and happy. My other three dogs would not be down at all. If I mean, they don't like strangers. If a stranger came in in a big furry costume, walking up to them they yeah it would be all all hell would break loose 
Yeah, it just it's just not a good thing. It's not for my for the dogs that I've been around and I've noticed that I don't see anybody um I don't see the dogs getting a big thrill out of it. I mean, there are some little children that have a tendency sometimes to grab on tighter to their parents and bury their faces in um in their parents' shoulders and chests as if to say, I don't know what this is, but protect me and get it away from me. And I sense that some dogs feel the same way. Um, so just, just really interesting, but it was an experience. It was not as bad as I thought, but have you been at a hockey game before? Yeah, not years and years ago. But what I ended up becoming the second part of the game, what I became mesmerized by was just the sheer um, talent that these skaters have on the ice. Yeah. Even to include the referees. Mm -hmm. I mean, they move about as if they were born right out the womb with these skates on. I mean, it is incredible. What's funny is that a lot of these guys practically were because, you know, because, you know, they grow up in a place where that's, you know, basically, you know, where we like in California, probably a lot of people know how to swim versus other areas of the country. And I think where, you know, in these colder states where people are seeing their lakes turn into ice rinks, Mm -hmm. people just grow up um, skating. And it's just like, it's the second nature to them. It's amazing. Yeah. It's just because um... they look like it's like they're walking around out there. I mean, there, mm-hmm. I mean, just nothing, whereas I get out on the ice and I'm, I'm like holding on to the edge of something. <laughs> and just like when I watched the, um, the referees, they're not even paying attention to where they're going. They're so focused. I mean, laser locked at the puck. That's all they're looking at and, and how they're able to weave in and out and around. So that once I locked into that, that was what carried me through. Cause you know, originally I wasn't going to stay the whole game. Um, <laughs> just get me on the jumbotron so that people could see I was there. And then I was like out, but it was great to sit there and just watch them skate. I truly enjoyed that part. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, I can, you know, cross that off my, my bucket list. <laughs> so um, interesting though, Friday, yesterday, I took Jax to the vet, um, for an ear infection. I didn't pay attention. Mm-hmm. I didn't see the signs I should have. And the biggest sign of all is when Harley gets up underneath Jax's floppy ear, like to smell it. I can usually, he's smelling something that I don't know, right, but when right. I think it was Wednesday night, I, I, the, he walked by and I was like, oof, whatever that is, um, lifted the ear and it was inflamed, looked like it, mm-hmm. like a cauliflower. So I had some um, solution that mm-hmm. I could put in it to give him a little bit of relief. But the thing that's very interesting, and I'm going back to allergies, when I was there, they called me because I still am not allowed back into the building. Right. They called and they said, yep as an ear infection. And she said, you know, Miss Bennett, you're here on the 10th of March. She said, do you realize on the 9th of March last year, you were here and something like the 8th or the 9th of March in 2021. This happens every single year in the month of March with him. Mm. And I'm wondering if I can get in front of it, like February, start doing something in preparation. But for us right now, so many leaves and stuff are on the ground. They mm-hmm. stay damp because it rains all the time in this February, March period. Mm-hmm. And it's just very, very damp. He had his side of point um, or the caddy shot two weeks ago. So we're good, but it's just something else. So he gets this, this, it's a, like a rod, I guess you would call it. And it dissolves, they stick it all the way down into the canal and it Mm -hmm. dissolves over a period of time. And and it's like an antibiotic and it cleans out the infection. He's good to go almost as soon as it gets down there. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's not scratching. Well, he doesn't scratch. He rubs it with his paws Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. and shakes his head 
I mean, constantly where I wonder if anything in the frontal lobe is getting loose. Sometimes I call his name to see if he knows. <laughs> that so is interesting. interesting. But is that not ev- for the last three years in the month of March, the eighth or the ninth, and then the tenth? Uh, it's just bizarre. Yeah, yeah that is that- interesting. And why am I having an echo? Okay, it's gone now. Yeah, that is really interesting because, um, I mean, just for it to be at the exact same time. Yes. I mean, and it's just like, obviously it's environmental because it's not like you changed his diet this time. I mean, you would have figured mm-hmm. that out already. It, I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm telling you. And what I find is that environmental allergies are a lot harder to treat. I mean, I know people are, you know, Cause and I'll say it too, you know, change the diet and, um, you know, there's all these natural things that you can do for, we can do for our dogs, but, you know, depending upon, um, where you live, your individual dog, sometimes that just isn't enough. I know with Rodrigo, Mm -hmm. I change, he is, well, he's not raw fed now. He eats a cooked diet, but he eats fresh food. I work on his immune system. I work on his gut health but he still gets environmental allergies in the spring and the fall. And Mm -hmm. the only thing I can do, you know, is basically, you know, make it more comfortable for him. So for him, it's not the ears, it's his paws and keeping his paws clean with um, Scout and Apollo though, they, cause we have ponds on our property and they'll start swimming. And I've learned to, um, after they come out from swimming, like after we play and we go inside, when I'm drying them off, I then do a lot of stuff with their ears, not a lot, but, you know, I basically spray their ears with a mixture of apple cider vinegar and water. Mm -hmm. And and then um, before everyone goes to bed, I massage the inside of their ear with just a little bit of coconut oil. And because my is to try to stave off any type of infection because they go swimming. And you just, I mean, you, you don't give the poor coconut a break. No, that stuff is, I do it on everything. I was rubbing it on my face the other night. I love coconut oil. Uh, you know, I can see it now. Just, <laughs> I could go into some serious Red Fox X-rated thing right now <laughs> with coconut oil. So we're just going to go bypass that. But yeah, it's, um, and you know, it's interesting because they said, I know what this is and you know what this is, but we still have to spend, you know, $40 of your money to do the uh, the ear cytology. And I was like, I know, because you can't say, but it's, and it's, it smells yeasty almost. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure. And it's no, and, and I would never know unless I did it. Uh-huh. So maybe February, we'll talk about this again. I, know, I don't know if the vinegar and the apple side, I don't know if that would work for this but I'd be intrigued to see if I started that regiment yeah in February but you go so long this will come and go and um depending on how much time we spend at the beach uh it may or may not be an issue because Mm -hmm. again and I'm going to try to get some really good camera footage and hold that hold that thought um this summer because I've never and you know everybody always wants to talk about their own dog but I've <laughs> ne- I have never ever seen a dog like Jackson in the water Jackson I don't know how but he literally instantly started diving under the waves when they come uh-huh. I mean he really thinks his father like D doesn't stand for doodle it stands for dolphin <laughs> And he loves it. And so I have a difficult time with him if he spends too much time on the beach because we get the water in the ears. Most dogs just traps around the water, you know, prancing and and playing ball. Um, I have like a 30 foot training leash so Mm -hmm. I don't lose him. And he is, he's that dog swimming in the water. Like he'll go uh, the full 30 feet out Mm -hmm. and look at you like, come on. And I'm like, (laughs) no, I'll just hold the end and pray it doesn't break. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, so other than that, I could go a full 12 months before we have this conversation again. So it's, I got to remember, and then maybe I will see if that's something that the vet says, well, yeah, you want to mix the vinegar. What is it? Apple cider vinegar and what? And water. 
and water because and I did I did this flushing the ears. Well, actually, it's not even flushing the ears because I did this with Sydney um, years ago. And she used to get the yeasty ears. And I would basically put the apple cider vinegar and water in a mist bottle, just like a little travel spray bottle. And I would just spray into her ear and a little bit down her canal and just sort of, you know, massage the ear Mm -hmm. and let it sit. And, um, and then I would go back and just, if there was extra wetness, I would, you know, dry it up with a soft tissue. And then before bedtime, I would massage the coconut oil because it would melt with the skin contact and make its way down the canal. And I did this with her for seven days and it completely cleared up but she didn't have an infection. She just had yeasty ears. So they hadn't gotten to the point where it had, it had caused an infection. So I don't know if that would work once an infection has set in, but I do wonder if it would work with your pup, you know, to stave it, to keep it from going that far. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure. Now I use the term infection because that's mm-hmm. all I know, you know, um, whatever it is, I don't know, but they put rods and I'm looking at my invoice, C-O-C-C-I in his right ear today. So whatever the cocky is, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, that's what they put in his ears yesterday. And, and it is, um, it makes a world of difference. So, um, but I don't know what the, what cocky is. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't tell me that. Yeah. it's it's a part of the cocos bacterial cell mm-hmm. I, I, yeah but he's miserable and and they're usually really good about getting him in um early but let's go back to my um hold that thought about my video uh-huh i'm so excited so two years ago yes two two years ago for my birthday my son bought me a gopro with all the, the hand held waterless, I mean, waterproof stand and the GoPro um, harness for Jax and all of that. Cause remember I wanted to start Jax's own little mini reality show. Right. Um, you know, from, from his level. Well, my phone was inadequate and would not allow me to download the GoPro app. And so, yeah, yeah, it was that old. My phone was that old. (laughs) So I I just put it like, you know, you put it away. Mm -hmm. And so last week I had to finally, everything was shutting down on my phone. USAA said, "Uh -uh, no more mobile um, deposits with you. Then Wells Fargo said, "Uh -uh, no more mobile deposits with me. (laughs) The final straw was when I called a Zoom meeting and I had to, I tried to pull over to pull it up on my iPad and using my phone, I mean, my phone. (laughs) Nope, your, this device cannot support Zoom. I thought, oh hell, it's time to go ahead and get a phone. So long story short, I got a phone last week and, you know, she and I have been learning to get along. (laughs) Um, it's 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 been a volatile relationship yes less eight or nine days and so but um today until the power went out I was installing the GoPro app and YouTubing what I'm supposed to do with this little midget camera so I'm I'm gonna start um when we get off the phone, I'm going to put the harness on Jack. So when we go for a walk, I'm going to test it and see how it works. But I'm hoping that by the summer, I will have perfect this and I get some really cool shots of Jax going under the water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See how I tied all of that in? Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's my world. What's your world? My world is we are painting the house. Um, the inside because we got tired of the colors and so Johan painted a room yesterday and it's beautiful the living room so now he's down there painting the dining room this morning I helped him paint the trim and so I think he's going to start on the walls this afternoon Um, oh the couple that paints together stays together well I know he's he knows what he's doing it's beautiful good yeah we um 
came up, he, he kept t- trying to convince me to paint the trim in our house white. And I was just like, we don't need to do that. And he did it. And he was right. It's beautiful. It just, it makes a huge, nice difference. And it's kind of nice because um, the house, you know, we just want it to look cozy, but crisp. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just, and it's, he's pulling it off. So after he finishes the dining room, then we move on to the family room and the kitchen and just keep going until the entire downstairs is painted. And then the upstairs hallway. Nice. Yes. So that's what, that's what we're doing. It's, it's been interesting because you like, there's so many, you know, we went to get like low odor paint because it's still too, a little too chilly to just leave the dogs outside all day. Mm-hmm. So um, we have the wit- the rooms blocked off and the windows open in the house so that the dogs aren't overwhelmed by the fumes. But when we were shopping for paint, um, my girlfriend told me about it and I saw it at Home Depot. They have scents where you can pour a scent into the paint so that you can make like a room smell like lavender for six months or vanilla for six months. And I thought that that was a, a cool idea. I mean, of course, I'm sure people, you know, we learned a lot about like fragrance and the toxic- toxicity of the fragrances that, you know, are put in air conditioners and all those type of things. So there is, there's that, you know, concern, but also, you know, Johan brought up the fact that, you know, what if we pour these scents into our paint and we paint the room and we decide we don't like it. And then we're stuck with this scent in our house for the next six months. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's a good point too. But I just mm-hmm. thought it was uh, an I don't know how healthy or safe. I didn't look into it. Once we decided not to buy it, I stopped looking into it, but I thought it was um, a cool idea, you know, for pet homes. Well, I think even not necessarily a pet home, check this out. Imagine if you just did it like in a bathroom. Oh yes. That's a good idea. I mean, how cool would that be? Mm -hmm. That's actually a really good idea. To just already, you know, you don't have to go in the bathroom with the Lysol. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's already there. Okay. I said I was going to behave today since I didn't behave um, last, <laughs> last week. Oh, and you know, I'm really disappointed in you. Why? Because I thought the first thing that we were going to discuss, you were going to ask me about my, my, um, my dinner last Saturday. How was your dinner? Did you have what you said you were going to have? Hanger steak, garlic mashed potatoes, and a Caesar salad. Yes, I did. (laughs) Was it delicious? It was. I thought about you as I ate it. (laughs) (laughs) If you're going to go, so maybe this is something, I guess I don't go out often enough because if I'm going to go out to dinner, I want to peruse the menu. Yes. At my own pace. So yeah. sometime between when I accept the invitation and when I sit down at the restaurant, I have already looked at the menu online. Am I the only person that does that? Yeah, I, I don't well, want to make I, that I do decision. It. I don't want to make that decision when I'm there. Well, I do it, but and the I do it for probably the same reasons where I'm curious and I don't like to hold everyone up or feel under pressure and end up ordering something I don't like. So I'll check out the menu and I'll come up with a couple of ideas of, okay, maybe I'll have this and I'll, or I'll have this, but I like it. I think it's fun to just check out to see what the uh, restaurant has. I just it's probably a pleasant surprise. I just caught you off guard when I responded, huh? About what? When you asked me what I was having for dinner. No. And last week, and I told you, I think I caught you off guard. But that's okay. That's okay. So um, I got a dog food. I got a dog food issue. Okay. Yeah. You said it was like, wasn't going to be what I expected. So yeah, I'm really curious about this. I don't understand as dogs get older, do they, does their appetite, mm, not their appetite. Well, yeah. Does it? Yeah. The appetite or taste buds. Not the taste buds as much. Harley's just not eating as much as he usually does, which has now triggered Jax to feel that it's the right thing to do <laughs> to, to leave a little, food. to leave a, no, to leave a little in his bowl too. Oh, well, the thing about it is that I honestly think that even if we don't realize it, we're constantly overfeeding our dogs. 
And so if my dogs back away from their food, unless they back away from the bulk of their food, I don't worry too much about it. I just, cause I noticed with Rodrigo, he turned 12 this week, by the way. So he's 12 I, years old. I said happy birthday to him I on saw, Facebook. I, I saw that. I appreciate it. I'm just so excited about it. But, and I'm re- the reason why I'm so excited about 12 is because his, his first vet said that he wouldn't live long past his third birthday. So for me, the fact that he reached 12 years old is such a huge triumph for us. But, um, but yeah. Now he, why would she have said that? It was a he, and it was because he's an a-hole. <laughs> okay. he, he wasn't a very nice man I'm, I'm sure that when he started you know the vet business he probably was a lovely animal loving human being but by the time I landed in this clinic it became abundantly clear that he did not like rescue dogs and he just felt that they all had a ton of issues and he treated everything with antibiotics rather than looking into anything and he didn't appreciate any type of questions so um, he wasn't a very nice person so you know that's just who he was, but, um, um, but that I'm proud that over the years I have refrained from marching my dog back into his clinic to, to tell him he's still alive. I said, (laughs) remember me. (laughs) I I realized that that was not necessary. No, it's not. No, but yeah, he, his appetite not only changed, but has decreased. So when, you know, last year I was feeding him raw and he ate about, 12, to, I, sh- I would say a couple years ago, he was eating about 13 ounces per meal. And now he eats about 12 ounces per meal, you know, 11 to 12 ounces per meal. And, um, and he doesn't eat raw anymore. I cook his food. So he stopped eating raw. Um, and so, and I've spoken to several people about this, you know, veterinarians that I know, and they said, it's not unusual for a dog's, you know, diet preferences to change when they get older and specifically, um, raw fed dogs, like older dogs don't want the cold food anymore. Well, I just find it to be interesting. And so here's another new thing. So Harley's doing a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. Um, he's picking and choosing if he wants to travel with me. (laughs) um sometimes he gets out there on the porch and you know if the wind blows and it doesn't feel like he wants it to feel it doesn't matter that Jackson and I are in the car waiting for him to come down the stairs he just turns around and goes to the front door as if to say if you don't mind getting out of the car and opening the door so I can go back in I (laughs) I greatly appreciate that Um, So that's the first thing, because Harley's always wanted to go, go, go. Mm -hmm. Then there are days when he wants to go, go, go. Um, I don't think that there's anything wrong with him. Like he's sick or anything, because it just depends. Now, the late this week from Monday to this morning, he just doesn't come downstairs when I'm serving breakfast. He prefers to come down later in the morning. Uh, He will come downstairs when he hears me open the front door to get ready to walk jacks Mm -hmm. and he'll go for a walk and he'll do his business and he'll come back and maybe about 11 ish maybe noon ish Mm -hmm. he'll eat his breakfast huh and that yeah and that's the new thing um sometimes they would get uh they'd share a hardball day with their um air dried food or a tablespoon of pumpkin or cottage cheese, or the broth, or the goat's milk, you know, I put a little something in there in the morning just to make them happy (laughs) as I, you know, and uh, mm -mm. nope, now they just want the dry food, if I do anything, it must be on the side, they're driving me nuts. Yeah, um, Rodrigo won't eat eggs anymore, no matter how I cook them, he won't eat them, Um, unless... I'm eating them. So he'll come and sit next to me and he'll eat my eggs, but he won't eat them on his own. Mm-hmm. And um, I can't put them next to his food or anything. It doesn't, and I've tried cooking them many different ways to see how he would eat them. And he was eating them all the way up until last week. And then he was just like, nope, not eating eggs anymore. So now I have to, because since I'm cooking for him, I mix the eggs into his food while I'm cooking. And mm-hmm. that's how he, and he eats it just fine. But, um, but yeah, he's very, he's yeah he's very particular about what he he stopped eating vegetables um but then he'll eat whole vegetables so purees i i usually do a vegetable 
vegetable puree, because I was told that if you want your dogs to be able to absorb the nutrients, you need to break the cellular wall. And you do that by either lightly cooking the vegetables or pureeing the vegetables. So I was pureeing vegetables for years. And he's just like, yeah, I'm not eating that. But if I cook up, you know, just lightly cook, uh, like broccoli and you know what, you know, the, the, the stem, not the flower, but the stem cook that up, chop it up. He'll eat that all day long. So it's just, it's been an interesting thing of just figuring out what he will and won't eat. Yeah. The green beans is like right now that's at the top of the list. Yeah. They'll go down and I'll give them, when we get off the phone, I'll give them some green beans, but you said something that is very true. I have got to Friday, uh, yesterday, Jack's visit, he's 71.2 pounds. Mm -hmm. I know that this vet is going to crucify me. She wasn't there yesterday. Um, so her associate took care of us, Mm -hmm. but she wants him at like 67 pounds. Mm -hmm. And so I really have to go back to, um, being a little more diligent with my, my measurements. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had, I, go ahead. Um, I had to up the walks with my dogs because Zoe horribly gained six pounds and she is a chubby little chunkster. And that's completely my fault because I didn't adjust her diet enough during the winter months when we weren't out walking. So now she and I are walking twice a day because I don't, I'm afraid of cutting her food back too much because mm. I want to make sure that she's getting the nutrients and stuff and, and the food for energy. So she can go on these walks with me and stuff and not feel, you know, I don't want her to feel deprived. Um, so it's just like trying to find a balance between cutting back her, her meals. Cause usually she eats, I usually have her at 10 ounces per meal. And so I've cut her back to eight or nine ounces, um, wow. and, and replace it with green beans. But, um, I added, two walks. So she has to go on two walks a day, you know, at, at least five days a week. And that's slowly, she's already, she's dropped one pound. So she has five more pounds to go. Nice. So she, she has, um, but so she dropped one pound, but yes, it's, it's, it's hard to find this balance when it comes to losing weight. And it's funny because some people act like it's so easy to have your dog lose weight. And in some cases it is when Sydney was alive and went back when she was a fat dog, um, another content creator is Ronnie Lejeune of Perfectly Rawsome. She's also a dog trainer and she um, advocates for, you know, just fitness. And she reached out to me and offered me some tips for her because my worry was that at, Sydney had um, joint issues. So she couldn't really go for long walks. And so she told me, well, instead of you walking her kind of like have her walk you or like I walk at her pace rather than having her walk at my pace. So she's like, you know, so we started with just walk for 15 minutes and Sydney didn't have to walk for the entire 15 minutes, but just be out there moving with me for 15 minutes and slowly build it up. And eventually I got her to walking all the way around our property twice on a daily basis. And we would just do the, the um, border of our property two times. And she lost almost 10 pounds. And so when she passed away, she was a lot lighter than what she was at her heaviest. It's just, yeah, it's just really, um, I'm not worried about it because Mm -hmm. their behavior is fine. Um, I, I just think, so of course, doodle dad, had to inject because (laughs) I mean, you know, we're co-parenting now. Um, And, you know, his thing is that you just keep putting all that crap in there with it. They just take all the crap. And I was like, well, I was giving them variety. And Dr. Craig is like, did your dog ask for variety? And I'm like, both of y'all leave me alone. Um, A little cheese sometimes, a green bean, broccoli, flour, pumpkin, cottage Mm -hmm. cheese. Uh, mm -mm, Nope. They're, they're just, it's like straight up dog food right now. That's all yeah. they want. <clears throat> and I just, I try to, um, I'm, I'm doing this new thing with my dogs. It's called rotational mono feeding. And I'm, um, I learned about it when I was interviewing people for national raw feeding week and I'm trying it with my dogs and just trying to find a balance that works for my dogs. And I'm working on a review of the, 
the model of raw feeding. And one thing that Nora Lenz, she's the person who advocates for this. One thing that she constantly repeats in her book is that we have to pay attention to our dogs and, and, you know, let our dogs tell us what they need. Mm -hmm. And so if your dogs are, yeah, if they're cutting back on food, then maybe that's what they need. And especially because what you said just a little bit ago was that your dogs are fine. Like there, it's not like you're dealing with sick dogs or the behavior has changed beyond the fact that they're not eating as much and they're turning away from certain foods. And it's like, maybe this is what our dogs need at this moment in time. Exactly, exactly. And so I said, you know, I can always give you in the middle of a day, instead of giving you a commercial treat, Mm -hmm. I can give you like a tablespoon of cottage cheese. Mm -hmm. You know, for you, that's like ice cream. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can eat it that way. Why I'm pushing the cottage cheese only is because I paid for it and I don't want to <laughs> Well, that's the me and making yogurt for my dogs, which I mm-hmm. think is the reason why Zoe gained some weight. But as the other thing that I'm, because I'm actually, you've been thinking about this a lot over the past couple of days is, you know, adjusting my dog's diet based on what we're doing that week. I don't worry about the day, but it's like, what's going on that week. And if we have a week of really terrible weather where the dogs aren't getting out as much as they should, you know, we're not really doing long walks and things like that, then I need to adjust their diet accordingly rather than just let them eat at the normal amount. I mean, five days or seven days is, I don't think it's going to make that big of a deal in their waistline and how I'm feeding them, but it is, but it is something to, you know, just to always keep in mind because I mean, a, a season does make a difference because I've seen my dogs like in the summer, lose weight and be at their healthiest and look gorgeous because we're out running and playing and hiking and all that on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Whereas in, in the winter time, when we're inside on a daily basis, it's one of those, a reminder that we need to, it's winter time. We need to cut back your meals by this much because we're not getting the exercise that we were used to during the summer. Yeah. I just, um, I don't, I don't know. I, Harley is going to always teeter between 48 and 51 pounds. That's just what he does. Mm-hmm. And it's consistent, been like that for 13 years. So, I mean, it's just, it's remarkable. If only I knew his secret. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I could stay within a three pound radius. I'd be thrilled. You know, what I'd be doing, I'd be making money on social media. <laughs> <laughs> that's no. what i'd be doing capitalize <laughs> yes girl i'm just keeping it real i'm telling you right now i tell you you know how i stayed within a three a three calorie count um world for the last 50 years just go ahead and you know zell or cash at me $29.95 and I'll give you the link to my secret yeah I sure would no shame in my game no sir you'll no, be, a sir. be a millionaire before you know it mm-hmm. I'm watching I'm watching people do it right now. how many times have you been on Facebook and they say if your dog licks his paws or scratches his ears I can tell you the secret so you click and they go through 15 minutes of bs and yes. then want you <laughs> to give pay, them money to tell to them pay really money yeah. for the rest of the story yeah i mean I, so i could do that <laughs> I, I could do that so well the final thing i want to talk about <clears throat> was what we were talking about before we started recording and not not specifically this email that i got but i think it's interesting when it comes to people how they think of people like us who our content creators and we put content out there. It's interesting that um, years and years ago, I, uh, you know, I shut down um, a Facebook group that I had because I was just taking abuse left and right. It was a raw feeding group. And I would have people who wanted their feed their dogs, a vegan diet, get mad at me because I didn't allow discussions in a raw feeding group. But I was, I just looked at it as I wouldn't go to a vegan group and say, what's the best way to cook a steak. I'm there because, you know, I would go to a steak group for that or, you know, and, um, but I just, I remember a person told me instead of shutting down the group that because I put myself out there, I needed to 
accept the fact that people were going to be mean to me because that's just the way it was. And, and it was interesting to me because I was like, why would anyone want to accept that um, people are going to be mean to you and that that's just the way it is. And so you should just accept it and deal with it and move on. And I mean, I think that in reality, you know, we're going to encounter lots of different types of people on social media. Not all of them are going to be nice, but I don't think that we should have to tolerate it. We don't have to fight with them, but we don't have to put up with them either. Mm -hmm. And so I, I got an email today from someone and I'm, I'm always, um, skeptical of any type of email that starts off with, you know, this is an apology because I kind of have a suspicion that it's not really an apology <laughs> or it's sort of like a, I'm sorry, you're such a horrible person type of apology where it's just like, okay, I don't feel that you're sorry at all. <laughs> and so someone who called me um, a name on my Facebook page, I, you know, I, I used to go for people. I mean, if you've been following me for any strength of time, if you want to come for me, um, I'm ready, but I'm, I'm 50 marching towards 51 and I am tired. <clears throat> I'm tired of bickering with people who ultimately it doesn't matter. They don't pay my bills. They don't, um, care whether or not, you know, I live or breathe or die or anything like that. These are just inconsequential individuals who, basically woke up one morning and chose violence. <laughs> and then it's just like, I don't need to be, I don't need to participate. So whenever no, someone, don't. yeah, whenever says someone says something nasty to me on my Facebook page, I just block and ban them and just keep it moving because I'm not going to waste everybody else's time bickering with this person. I'm not going to waste my time. It's not going to help any dogs. It's not like me bickering. This person is going to give some body a great idea on how they can solve a problem with their dogs and it just ruins my day so I just block and ban and this person mm -hmm. sent me a very long email explaining to me why I was wrong to do that and um and I just wanted to just start with a you know I understand that when you see people on social media you know we have some type of distance from each other where we can you know maybe we can say whatever we want to and just keep it stepping but we're talking to human beings on the other side of that. And you don't have to care about their feelings, but you can't get all but hurt when you're nasty to someone and they, you know, they exit stage left because it's like, you know what? I'm not doing this today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. You just have to understand. I always look at it from the standpoint that sometimes people lash out at you because they're in so much pain. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to say that I'm that person who, you know, won't get upset and will purposely try to um, find the good but I'm not that person. I do, <laughs> I do get upset, but what I do remind myself is I have to, to stop and kind of check myself and make sure there was nothing in my behavior mm -hmm. that constituted or caused this person to feel this way or react this way or say whatever it is that they said. Yep. And once <laughs> I'm okay with that, I recognize that there's something going on in that person's life has nothing to do with me. Yeah, I just yeah. came along at the wrong time. Yeah. And so that's how I'm able to depersonalize and just move on. Okay. Because I have to say to myself at the end of the day, I don't intentionally try to offend anybody. I really don't. Um, so a lot of times I have to think and say, okay, what did I say or do that could have caused it? Sometimes, I mean, innocently, I, 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 I was responsible, but sometimes and more times it, it's not. I just happen to be in the wrong place yeah. at the wrong time. Well, and I think that- And, and then I, I, I get it. Yeah, I think a lot oh, of people- hello? Oh, I'm here. <laughs> I think a lot of people are hurting right now, you know, and stressed out for a variety of reasons. Our world is shaken up everywhere. And there's a lot going on. Exactly. Man. And there's a lot going and, on. And it's like, and I think people are a lot more sensitive than 
you know, maybe than they normally are, <clears throat> which is why mm-hmm. I have the rule of I no longer engage. If you're going to be rude, you know, I had a, I had a woman call me, <clears throat> call me ugly and said that I look like my, my face looked like I had, you know, dog crap spread all over it. It's like that wasn't I funny. I <laughs> don't know who that, that these was, people. I, are. I was like, that that who, I, I don't and, know. who are I, you? And I Jesus. read it trying to understand. Like it was, I was trying to understand. Like, is this a joke or is this like some type of maybe I had a joke with this person and it's supposed to, you know, remind me of it. I I just could not figure out what was supposed to be funny or and it you know it didn't feel like she was trying to be insulting but I wasn't sure because I don't know this person. So I just figured, you know what? I don't want to be said that I look like <laughs> my face looks like that. So I'm just going to ho- go ahead and block and ban and move on. And I did. Mm-hmm. And it's just, mm-hmm. that's to me the best way to deal with it because I, I am not a therapist. I can't take on someone else's story and help them work through their stuff. And, you know, it's so easy, you know, to offend people. Like I learned years ago that there are people who are very offended by the term I was binge watching that show, you know, because um, I, there was an article a woman wrote where she was, she uh, has an eating disorder. And whenever she sees people throwing around the word binging, it's a trigger for her. And while I was, I was reading that thinking, well, that's just ridiculous because, you know, there are many words out there that have multiple meanings, you know, and it's clearly evident that someone talking about binge watching Grey's Anatomy isn't intentionally trying to upset someone with an eating disorder. So, you know, I just did not under, I didn't, I didn't agree with the stance, but that doesn't mean that it's not her truth. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not going to change the way I speak because of this one person that, um, expressed, you know, that she was triggered by it. However, um, it was one of those, like, ah, that's an interesting thing to hear. And, and it it actually has stayed with me all these years because you never know what you're going to say. That's going to upset someone. And honestly, I've learned that it's not my business why someone gets offended or upset by one thing or another. That's their story, not my story. And it has nothing to do with me, but I also don't need to be on the receiving end of their, you know, nastiness if they're having a bad day, just like no one should be on the receiving end of my nastiness if I'm having a bad day. But, Mm -hmm. but it's just sort of like long story short, folks, when you're dealing with people on social media, don't be mad if they don't want to fight with you. I think that for me, there has been so much fighting over the past two years that I don't have the time or energy for it. I just, I just want to have fun with dogs. Mm -hmm. Be a girl with dogs. Be a girl with dogs. That's how it becomes. Be a girl with dogs. (laughs) All right. Well, you know, our cameras are off, but you know, who's glaring at me. Uh, is he so, there? I'm, he's there. He's, he's right. there. He's there. My, <laughs> my little clock is telling me that I must go downstairs now and prepare a meal that I'm not sure he's going to eat. But, you know, I'll let you know next week. I will. All right. Well, I hope your power stays on and that. Um... I do too. I do too. This would be so not like my Saturday night that I um, was planning. So. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Have a I need wonderful my power. Week. Have a wonderful weekend, my friend. You Have do the weekend. same. You do the same. Anybody let anybody mess with you? Give them my number. I will. I damn well. Oh God. Oh God. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>